Outworld released a patch a couple days ago, and in this patch, there is something very, very interesting. There is a whole bunch of balance adjustments and base fixes, but we don't care about that. Nope, not for today's video. We care about this added meteorite and supply drop interval settings to world options. Now, dear viewer, I had a thought. What would happen if you push that idea to its limits? What if I were to, I don't know, set it that I had meteorites or supply drops fall every one minute? How overpowered could I get? Oh my god, I hit for a thousand? Could I beat all the towers? Watch to the end to find out. So first things first, I need to level up a bit, make my starting gear, then head out to where meteors and supply drops can land. My experience rate is 3x, so leveling up really isn't that big of a deal. I spent a lot of time in the starting area, I got some resources, I built out my starting gear, and by the time I was ready to leave, I was level 7. It is time to start exploring. During my exploration, I ran into my very first lucky pal, Fox Sparks. I hear a lucky... Where is it? It's a Fox Sparks. Oh, that's cool. Oh god. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That was bad. Come on. Nice. Whew. That was pretty insane. But we got our very first pal. Very excited that it's a Fox Sparks too. That's, that's so good. That is so good for us. This was a huge win for me. A, I love Fox Sparks, but B, well, there really is no B. I just love Fox Sparks and it's a super cool pal. I explored around in the night and then the sky started to fall. We had our very first meteorite land. It is time for our very first meteor. Um, I'm gonna put a pal box down here, just in case I die. Um, <laughs> since I'm only level eight, uh, this this is gonna be uh, interesting to say the least. Oh god, it started. <laughs> There's a supply drop. Uh, we definitely need to get the supply drop. So, meteorites are cool, but supply drops are cooler. Simply because supply drops drop uh, remedies that will increase your stats. And that's pretty much the whole concept of the video. Like, how OP can I get? Anywho, I'm still too low of a level to even attempt meteorites right now. So, I think it's probably time to start leveling up. To do that, I decided it was time to start catching a whole bunch of pals. I hit level 9, I caught some more pals, and then I hit level 10. Now, because of all this catching, I'm starting to get too... fat. <laughs> so, I decided it was time to make a base. I chose this spot by the desolate church. I spent a lot of time working on my base, and while I was doing this, I had my fox sparks start to refine my ore into ingots. So yay for being productive. I decided to make the base itself be a part of this mountain here. It's definitely a little challenging and kind of annoying to build this way, but I'm enjoying how it's coming out so far. I spent far more time on this base than originally planned, but honestly, I think it's super cool looking. It's kind of an open floor type of concept, Kind of. Maybe. I don't really know. Anyway, I made some more arrows, and then I headed out to catch some more base pals. I picked up a rock, and leveled up to 12. I went around catching a lot of pals I need for my base. Oh my god. The first Ekthire Deer has Runner, Motivational Leader, and Power of Gaia. Okay, cool. Well, uh, that's gonna be our first mount. Wow. 
Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> that, that's insane. Holy crap. I found this dude who had three mazarinas, and I of course decided to commandeer said mazarinas, and I caught two of them. I leveled up to 13. After this, I found a couple tansy that I caught, and to finish off this excursion, I ran into single-handedly the most cute thing I have ever seen in Pal World. Oh my god, what are you guys doing? Oh, oh! Oh my god, that was single-handedly the cutest thing I have ever seen T-Fant do. Oh god. Oh wow. Um, I don't know what to say. I am uh, speechless. Oh wow. <laughs> that was so cute. Oh my god. It's nighttime now, and there are two pals that I'd like to catch. The first of the two pals is going to be a Depresso. Because honestly, dear viewer, no base is complete without a Depresso, and this is a hill that I'm willing to die on. The last pal that I wanted to get was a Tombat, but for the absolute life of me, I could not find one at all. And I mean, I searched for a long time, but they weren't here. Whatever. Instead, I caught this sleeping Vixie. Then, I was planning on catching all three of these Rush Roar, but my lovely Fox Sparks had another idea, so I ended up with two. I'm back at my base now, and I'm finally at the point where I can have some base pals. I dropped off which pals that I wanted to be in the base, and then I leveled up my base as much as I could. I made the high quality workbench, then made myself a crossbow. I had my very first raid happen, and I really wasn't all that prepared, so I did make a few arrows before they got here. This was a pretty easy raid, and I honestly kind of feel a little bad for the Syndicate members that were unlucky enough to get sent here. I saw a couple Vixie after I took those members out, and caught two of them. Because of this, I leveled up to 15. And in reading off my script, I don't know when I leveled up to 14. Huh. But I'm 15 now, so that's cool. I made more arrows, then I made a metal pickaxe. I spent quite a while mining for ore, then I had my fox sparks refine it into ingots. While waiting for said ingots, I worked on my base a bit more. I don't really know where I'm taking this, but I'm really falling into this whole concept of everything being like really close together inside of this mountain. Yeah, honestly, I think this room is so cool. I don't know what else to say about it. I just really like it. I think it's awesome. <laughs> I made a sphere workbench, then a pal gear bench, because I completely forgot that I got a swift ekthire deer. <laughs> Once I made the saddle, I decided it was probably time to go back out. The base is self-sufficient now, and it looks pretty. And now, when I go out, I won't have any worries about all my little buddies. I first went to the small settlement to buy some arrows and wheat seeds. Next, I went to fight Chillit, but before I do that, I want to get Fox Sparks' pal gear so I can use it as a flamethrower. I got the flame organs I needed to make the harness, then hunted for lamb ball to get some wool and meat. I went back to my base, and then I made Fox Sparks' harness. With the harness in hand, it is time to fight Chillit. This went about how you would expect it to. I used my cute little lucky flamethrower, got Chilla's health down pretty low, and then I caught it with a pal sphere. This leveled me up to 16. I learned how to make the feed bag with my ancient technology point too. I made myself the heat resistant pelt armor and the feed bag, and now it is officially finally time for us to see just how overpowered I can get. I headed towards the location I knew meteors and supply drops would fall. Alright, it has begun. <laughs> uh, so I started this video a couple days ago. I cannot remember what I actually set the setting to. Is it every minute? Oh, young and naive megabits of the past, yes. Yes it is. It is indeed every minute. Uh, this becomes insane. Uh, absolutely insane. Literally every single minute, a meteor or a supply drop will drop. It's nuts. The goal is to get as many supply drops as I can. I think I'm gonna do this for a few minutes to see what I get. Okay, so 
I am definitely not ready to take on Xenovators yet. Huh. <laughs> uh, oh, I forgot to change my drop penalty. Dang it. <laughs> All right. So safe to say baby Megabits is not fully ready to take on the uh, chaotic mayhem known as meteors falling every minute. And you know, honestly, that's incredibly clear to me now. I just need to focus on supply drops. But before that, we need to conduct a science experiment of sorts. Okay, I want to test the theory. Is the meteorite going to fall on me? He does damage when it lands! Whoa! That's crazy! Okay, y'all fight each other now. <laughs> I was expecting that to straight up kill me, so that's interesting. Okay, back to the task at hand. I traveled around and I found a spot where they would drop, and honestly, I just kind of hung out here for a while. Remember, the goal of this video is really just to see how stupidly overpowered I can become. This is totally not a series run and could 100% be considered cheating. This is simply just a fun video is all. At one point, I did decide to make a base close to this drop area. Through trial and error, I figured out where I could put a POW box so that the drops would still be initiated. I originally had the base computer like right around here, but because of this, meteors or supply drops wouldn't drop anymore. So I moved the POW box over here. This still allows drops to happen, but in doing it like this, it makes it easier for me to go back and forth to farm said drops. I'm just gonna cut to when uh, I decide to stop grinding. Hello, it has been like an hour and a half and I am fat. Yeah, like, 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 I'm so heavy. <laughs> Uh, doing all of this, I got to level 24, which is amazing. Let's talk about all of the loot. I got a lot of thermal undershirts and heat resistant undershirts, a lot of different pendants, 439 oil, 1,401 meteorite fragments, a lot of differing blueprints, a crap ton of pal spheres, but the creme de la creme. I got two vital remedy, 12 stamina remedy, 10 might remedy, 8 speed remedy, and 8 burden remedy. I'm now going to drink all of these. That's right, 40 remedies. I will be bloating, my tum tum might be herded, but I'll be stronger for it. Let's look at my stats before. And after. Good god, this is a thing of beauty. Having the stats that I do at only level 24 is just mind-boggling to me. The last thing I want to show off is the pals I caught. This Alpha Xenovator will be on my team now because it's awesome. I had no idea that you could get Alpha Xenovator from the meteorites. Aside from that Alpha, I caught another 17 more. So now, let's talk about what I want to do next. Well, I want to make gear, and then go utterly destroy Zoe and Grizzbolt. Let's first sell this extra gear from the supply drops. Now that that is completed, let's see what armor I can make from the blueprints that I picked up from the supply drops. I have rare heat resistant armor, an uncommon metal helm, and a rare handgun. I can only make the helm right now with the material I have, so I'm definitely going to need to go do some grinding of materials. To get the high quality pow oil, I originally planned on just knocking out a lot of flambel, but then I ran into this shady pow merchant who just so happened to have dew muds. Dew muds will drop high quality pow oil when in a ranch, so I'm just going to do that. I extended this platform right here because this is where I wanted my ranch. Again, I'm trying to do the whole thing where everything is all kind of self-contained and all close together. I don't know, there's something that looks cool about it. But anywho, I have the ranch made and I threw my dew mud in. While waiting for my dew mud to get me some high quality pow oil, I decided it was time to make a defense wall around my base. I think it looks really nice. After Power World updated how we could actually do our defense walls, I really like putting up defense walls now. They look so good. 
After this, I went out hunting. I needed a leather and I needed a lot of wool to make cloth. All right, it has been a long time, but I finally have all the materials I need. So I made my new handgun and my new armor. Now I need ammo. Then it'll be time for Zoe and Grizzbolt. So Megabits needs gold. It's time to take down some bosses. I first fought Pen King. I then forgot to hit record, but I fought Catris and leveled up to 26. I then fought Grintail. I fought Mossanda Lux. I fought King Paka. I fought Bushi. And finally, I then fought Relaxosaurus Lux. At this point, I felt like I had enough treasure, so I decided to start heading to Fisherman's Point to buy ammo. While doing this, I did stop at every single supply drop that landed. With all the extra gear and treasures sold, I was able to buy 372 bullets. There is one more thing I need to do before we can take on Zoe and Grizzbolt. I made a PAL Essence Condenser, then I condensed my Xenovator. It's now time to take down Zoe and Grizzbolt. My god, I hit for a thousand each shot? Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, this is gonna be fast. Okay, so this... <laughs> I'm, I don't even have to do any sort of commentary. This is probably the craziest build I've ever had. <laughs> uh. Okay, cool. Well, <laughs> Sony and Chris Poulter down. <laughs> wow. I wonder if I'm strong enough to just go fight Lily and Lilian right now. You know what? We'll, we'll try it. We'll try it. Wow, I actually really didn't have any time to do commentary. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this build is absolutely insane. I think I could maybe take on Lily and Lilian now. Before I do that though, I need some Wixen. While doing this, I caught some other pals that I thought I need for the base in the future, and then I went back to my base. I looked through all of the Wixen I caught and decided that the one I would be using would be this one that had Noble, Musclehead, and Hooligan. I plan on breeding a lot of pals in this run later, but this will just be perfect for now. I was able to condense it to two stars. I used some training manuals to level it up, and then it was finally time to take on Tower 2. type of damage I'll be putting out. I highly doubt it'll be as crazy as Zoe and Grizzbolt though. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that's still so much damage. Oh my god. That's so crazy. I don't really know exactly what I was expecting, but it wasn't that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, cool. Lily and Mylene done. <laughs> well, it's time to talk next steps. I think I need to work on my base a bit and begin breeding pals. Before I do that, I need a flying pal, which means it's time to fight Beacon. I call it Beacon with ease, but then I remembered that I can't even use its saddle for another four levels. 
That's fine. I'll just level up a bit later. Now, I think I want to catch an Alpha Dream and use that on my team since I never use it. These runs are about trying new things, so who knows, maybe I don't even use Beacon and I just stick with Alpha Dran. I crafted Alpha Dran's saddle, and boy does it feel good to fly, but holy crap, this thing is very slow. <laughs> very, very slow. <laughs> Now, it is time for base things. After a lot of trial and error, I was finally able to find a spot for my breeding farm, and I got it built. Now, I think it's time to go catch some better base pals. My first stop is the number one wildlife sanctuary. There's a lot of rarer pals here that I'd like to grab. Nothing too particular, just realistically whatever I can find. I'm not gonna lie, I miss my deer. Elphidran is just so slow. It is as slow as molasses. <laughs> In doing all of the catching here, I did level up to 31. I didn't stay too much longer after this and decided to go back to my base to change my pals up. I went to the small settlement to buy some wheat so I can make flour and then in turn make cake. I had my pen king work at my mill to convert the wheat into flour. I now have 56 flour. Let's see how many cakes I can make with that. I started making 11 cakes, then made what gunpowder I could. With the gunpowder I made, I was able to make 400 more bullets for my gun. I have some cakes made finally, which means it's time to start breeding. The pal I want to go for is going to be an Anubis. I'm choosing Anubis because its partner skill will change my attack to ground type, which is going to be perfect for the next tower against Axel and Orzerk. To breed for Anubis, I need an Incineram. So let's go catch a few of those. I went to Mount Obsidian, and after almost getting killed multiple times, I got the Incineram that I needed. What's crazy is, I was running away because I was about to die, and then this happened. Oh my god, wait, I was writing my script! <laughs> oh god. Oh, this is the first Xenoguard I've seen. Oh man, um... And all I have is Hyperspheres. Oh, this is bad. Okay. One more hypersphere for this. Oh, first try. Let's go. That was insane. <laughs> oh, I was not ready for that. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, cool. We got our very first Xenova uh Xenovator. Also, I realize I said Xenovator that whole time. I know it's Xenoguard. My brain just was running on one of the four pistons it has. What you doing there, buddy? <laughs> just, just sleeping? Just sleeping on the cooler box? I'm back at my base now, and it's time to begin breeding. Based on the calculator, I should be able to breed an Incineram with an Alpha Dran to get an Anubis. So let's do that. While waiting for eggs, I made Fengalope's saddle, and holy crap. Why have I never used this pal before? This thing is amazing! Oh, by the way, I, I caught a fangalope in Mount Obsidian. That's that's how I have a fangalope. In Megabit's fashion, I went AFK waiting for eggs, and now I no longer have any cake left, but I have all these Anubis eggs, so that's cool. I got the eggs, made an incubator, then started to hatch them. I got one that has Nocturnal and Sirius, so I put that in my base. Then I put one of them in my team. I then made more gunpowder, and then crafted more ammo for my handgun. After I finished making the rest of my bullets, I decided it was time to level up. I was on my way to do dungeons when I ran into another Xenoguard. I was planning on catching it until it grabbed a platter, then served me my own butt. It was pretty uncomfortable, and honestly, I don't really recommend it. Don't, don't get your butt served on a platter. Here you go. It's your ass. I did one dungeon, caught a whole bunch of gobfin, leveled up to 33, fought, and then caught Warsect, did another dungeon, caught some pals inside of said dungeon, leveled up to 34, beat said dungeon, found my second lucky of this run. Oh, hello there. Uh, Ring of Mercy's on. What is up, Lucky Gobfin? Caught it. Fought Elfdran.
did another dungeon, and then I caught a few pals to get myself to level 35. Now that I'm at this level, I want to go try to beat Axel and Orzerk. I sold off the treasures that I got from the dungeons, bought some more ammo, and then I headed to Axel and Orzerk. On my way there, I did find another meteor that had Xenogard in it. I unfortunately got murked because of this. I continued my journey to the tower once again, and I found another meteor with Xenogard in it. But this time, I was out for a vengeance, and I caught it. So that was nice. After doing a lot of Fangalope Skyrim horse physics, I got to the tower, and I went inside. Okay, so this fight is not going to be a fast fight by any means. I was doing maybe 300 damage per shot even with my Anubis' partner skill. This was still okay though. I was like in a flow state I'm pretty sure because whatever Orzerk threw at me, I was dodging. And the whole fight was actually kind of crazy because I was doing so much damage that Orzerk for the most part only focused on me. My Anubis took literally, like, zero aggro during this whole fight and barely took any damage. The 5 minute mark hit, and I knew that my Anubis and I would come out as the victors in this fight, because we already did far more than half of its health. The fight went on and on, and I for sure had a couple close calls, but we neared closer and closer to victory. It was almost time for my final shot that would be heard around the tower, and I had a moment of panic. I shot them, but they weren't dying. I had left my ring of mercy on. I hurried in hopes of getting it off, but by the time I did, Anubis had already roundhoused them in the face, and we did indeed win this fight. So that's three towers done, and I have three left to go. I think that this is probably going to be a good stopping point. If you'd like to see more of this playthrough, comment down below. I know it's probably not the most crazy playthrough that I've done, but it's been incredibly fun for me. But that's all I got. Bye!